Greetings guys, this is Dogcraft, and today I am driving the FE4 202P. As some of you guys know, a few weeks ago I had completed the mission that enabled me to get the FE4 202P in my garage for free. So I am really happy about that, but uh, right at the moment after I got my FE4 202P, uh, I stopped playing for the World of Tanks because the holidays in which I managed to get uh, the FE4 202P were over. So I had to go back to school and I didn't even have a chance to play the FE4 202P after I got it. So the first time that I had uh, time to play this vehicle was this week, a few days ago I think. And this is I think the second battle I had uh, in the FE4 202P. As we can see we've got a very good matchup here on the map Winterberg. And um, as you can see there are a lot of enemy heavy tanks on the enemy team. So what I decided to do is go into the field. Why? Because I would rather not fight uh, a lot of those heavy tanks frontal. Because there are that many heavy tanks on the enemy team. And it's very high likely that most of them are going to go into the city. So if I go into the city as well. It's very likely I am going to have to fight them front on. And that is something that this tank isn't really good at. Why? Because when this tank is not using its gun depression. It does not get the best armor you could ever get. So, at the field, I will uh, probably meet all the other tanks that are not heavy tanks. And of course, a few heavy tanks that I can engage at long range. And that's exactly what this tank needs. Because if it's not using his gun depression, the armor is pretty weak. And, uh, as some of you guys know as well, the FE4202B got buffed in patch 9.14. So, I have never actually played the FE4202B in its stock configuration. Yeah, in its stock configuration. You know what I mean. I've never played the FE4202P when it was not buffed. When it had the uh, 2.6 seconds aiming time and a 0.35 accuracy, which is pretty bad. And now the tank is pretty alright because the uh, Wargaming buffed the gun characteristics. The accuracy, uh, I think, went up to 0.33, if I remember correctly. And the aim time all went down from 2.6 seconds to 2.3 seconds, which is very good I uh, by the way I might be mistaken uh, if yeah about the, 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 better, yeah, the accuracy because I don't know for sure anyway doesn't really matter so now as we can see we have totally eliminated the field of Winterberg and uh, all the enemy heavy tanks are crossing the middle path here so uh, I have some very good shots uh, into these heavy tanks here and what is really nice about the FV4 202P is that it gets this 20 pounder with the 226 millimeters of penetration, I believe. Yes, 226, which is a really good penetration amount for a tier 7 tank. So, you get a pretty good gun. You get a pretty alright reload time of 6.75 seconds, and that includes a good crew, uh, gun rammer, and ventilation. So, I am using. Uh, pretty much one of the best configurations you could ever use on the fe 422 p uh, One of the disadvantages uh, outside of the gun characteristics, some of them at least, is the mobility. As we can see the top speed of this tank only is 35 kilometers an hour, which isn't amazing. But that doesn't really matter. So, now that you guys know a lot more about the fe 422 p I'm going to talk a bit more about this game. Uh, as we could see, all the enemy heavy tanks managed to uh, win the city. So it's very likely that they roll into the cap circle. That's exactly what they do. And I know that the IS-6 was uh, near us, near me and Boombox. So I loaded some premium rounds just to make sure that I got through him. So I've still loaded the premium round to make sure to get the reset off on the cap. Luckily we do get the reset off. I do take a shot but I decide that's worth it because I'd rather win this game. And as we can see we have defended the base. Both enemy tanks that were capping uh, have died. So as we can see the scores are even. Four tanks alive on both teams. And what is the smart thing to do now? Well uh, going back into the field doesn't make any sense anymore because most enemy tanks aren't there. So uh, boombox on either side. We are going after this Tiger 2. I've still got premium shells loaded. It's not really needed anymore, but I quite, I'd quite like to win this game because this was only my uh, second game of the FE4 202P. 
and my results weren't that great in the first game. So I decided, okay, let's just go and try to win this game. Ice 3 and the Tiger 2 are both here, luckily. So, got the Ice 3 in the open here. Just a matter of aiming at some shots here. Luckily, I do. Put another in. The Ice 3 is pre-aiming on me. Uh, well, that was expected. Luckily, he fires and that enables me to go and put the final shot in. But it bounces. Yeah, it doesn't really bounce, but it uh, missed the hitbox of the Ice 3. But luckily, Boombox manages to take him out. So now it's just a matter of going after these light tanks and we're just going to speed up this last part a little bit because the light tank is going to run away. But now as you can see the 1390 is unfortunately going to die and it's just a case of taking down this VK. I have no idea how that last shot missed. But anyway, let's take him down here. This of course wasn't the best game for the fe 4202 p 3000 damage. But I am really happy with this result. First I wasn't really sure if it was worth showing the statistics of this game in this video. It of course wasn't the best game you could ever have. But as it was my second game in the FE4202P, I thought I still had to show this off. Why? Because this game enabled me to get the good statistics that I wanted. Next up we're going to look at another replay of the FE4202P. That game is going to be a little bit better than this one was. So for the second replay, we are watching a game on Sand River, yes, Sand River, and this was my fourth game and the FE 4202P. As you can see, again, it is a really good matchup for this tank. It almost couldn't have been any better. There aren't that many tier 8 uh, enemy tanks on both teams. So I am not really afraid of any tank in the game apart from the enemy artillery. They have some really scary enemy artillery. Uh, including the GW Tiger P, that's the tank I'm most afraid of because that tank just gets such a devastating gun. So I'm going to be really keen on not getting hit in this game because I know that um, this tank doesn't have the best armor, so I'd rather not get hit. So I decided to come to this ridge line here. Why? Because I can use my gun depression, and I know that there's always uh, some tanks trying to progress from the enemy base spawn point to this. Yeah, how do you call it? Position there on the uh, 9 and 0 line. And I am right, there's a tiger completely in the middle there. Just a matter of aiming at the shot and putting it in. I do have to be careful though, because as you can see, if I drive up too far there, the Apex 5100 will be able to hit me from that position where he was, yeah, where we saw him in. Also, this T34 1. Uh, yeah, put himself into a bit of trouble. I know that this tank doesn't have enough gun depression to use that position properly. So I know that I will be able to put some shots in. As you can see, I'm trying my best after every, after every shot to try and avoid the artillery. So far, it's been enough. Also, the OI, yeah, I don't really have a chance to bounce on the OI. The tank has got armor, but not for a tier 8 tank, especially for me with my 226 millimeters of penetration. So the Tiger is in the open again. We can, of course, easily put a shot in there. And this is just absolutely devastating for me. The GW Tiger P, the tank I said I was most afraid of, missed me, didn't even hit me, and did almost a thousand damage to me. A thousand splash damage. That's just ridiculous. And that's what I was afraid of. And it happened. So, oh well. The thing is, this tank, of course, isn't the best for artillery dodging, as the top speed limit is only 35 kilometers an hour. Which doesn't really help, to be honest. So, I've been able to do some good damage from that position, though. So, uh, it, it, it could have been a lot worse. At least I'm still alive. And a lot of people would rage quit at this moment. But uh, something that I always tell my friends and tell other people when I see them rage quit is it doesn't matter that you take this shot, you are still alive. So your gun still counts in the game. And that's something that is really important to know. Even players with one hit points are as dangerous as players with full hit points. Of course, uh, when people are on one hit points, they are a lot easier to kill. But that doesn't mean that they are less dangerous in the game. And that's exactly what uh, doesn't stop me from trying to carry this game. As we can see, we are three tanks behind. And the enemy team, the enemy team has killed 
a very fair amount of our team. We pulled back one there. The Tiger 2 made a very big misplay. He was a very good player, but he drove out in the open. That enabled us to put some side shots in the mid to, into him and take him down. So uh, that probably means that not any tanks are going to drive down the same way the Tiger 2 did. So it's very likely that on the other uh, position something is going to happen. I'm a bit worried about the Bulldog, but the thing is I can't really do anything about the Bulldog at the moment. So I have the tiniest shot in the world on the Amex 5100. It would have been very lucky to hit that. Of course I don't, but it doesn't really matter. So I decide, okay, those there are a lot of tanks back there and they can fight against the Bulldog. I am one of the only tanks on this flank, so I'm going to have to help here. Luckily, I do manage to hit the shot on the T25T. He was pulling back, but luckily I managed to put in the shot. Uh, let's see, the T34-1 is still there. Doesn't look like he's peeking out, but I'm still going to use this position again. If there is any tanks peeking out at the moment. And there we can see one of the dangerous tanks on the enemy team. The ISU. Uh, I fire a fully aimed shot. My shot goes very high and to the left. And then probably missed him. Because I didn't see my shot disappear in the air. So that probably means that it missed. I fire a second one blind. It probably hit. We don't know. Depends on if the ISU moved or not. So still we are one tank behind. And the situation isn't looking that bad to be honest if we manage to kill that isu we can have a far better chance of going into the enemy base but that's when a surprise is gets spotted on the other flank there and another two of my teammates get killed so i put a shot into the is and i decide okay let's try to kill this isu here luckily with this tank's penetration i was able to hit that very well angled shot because in uh, a lot of other tier 8 medium tanks that shot would have bounced Fortunately, I missed the shot on the T25-2. It wasn't fully aimed, but still was very close. The second one goes right through, though. And now this T34-1 is doing something I can't explain. He rushes forward, forgetting that I'm on this ridge or something. I have no clue. But I managed to take him out. Also, the ISU has died, which is very fortunate for us. And now only this IS is still back there on the other flank. So... What I'm thinking at the moment, I'm thinking, okay, I've got binoculars, I'm going to stand on this ridge and activate them to see if I can spot him. But his last known position isn't yeah, in my uh, spotting range. So I'm thinking, okay, if I don't spot him, that means that he can't see me as well because the IS has got a really bad view range. Even with a very good crew, if he would have had that, uh, it would have been very hard for him to spot me. So that means I can safely go down the ridge and go into the enemy base. And I'm thinking, okay... It's been a great game so far and uh, I'd rather take down the win because it is very hard for me in a tank that only goes 35 kilometers an hour to hunt down three uh, SPGs and an IS still. So I'm thinking, okay, we're going to uh, go for the safe win and that is, of course, the cap circle here. If we cap with two people, we can easily make this on time without risking too much here. The Cromwell does go after the uh, self-propelled guns on the enemy team, which is fine. He's a quick tank. He can, of course, afford to do this. I am not fast enough, so I will never be able to uh, get there in time, as I said. So, the thing is, there is still enemy artillery alive. So, I'm not going to stand near houses or any wrecks if the artillery is going to blind fire into the cap. Uh, to give myself the highest chance that the army artillery misses. So the IS goes into the open, which enables me to put a clean shot into his side armor, which is nice. And um, do I get a second one in? I don't get the second in, but it was very expectable that the Cromwell died to the IS. But of course, there's only 10 seconds left for us to cap, and it's impossible for the IS nor the Hummel to um, try to interrupt us here. And we take down the safe win at the FE4 202P. So as I said, this game was a little bit better. It still wasn't anything extraordinary, I know this. But the thing is, I just wanted to put up some content on the FE4 202P on my channel. And so I hope that this video was enjoyable to watch. And if it was enjoyable, please consider leaving a like as I did put a lot of time in making this video. Also think about subscribing if you haven't already. I hope that you had a great Easter. And I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. Yeah.